Donald Trump. Have you ever been with a fat woman? No. <laughs> you should Just try it. I know. Then, filmmaker and working class crusader Michael Moore. You've been on welfare at times in mm -hmm. your life. I've been on unemployment three different times in my life. And but you know what? Neither one of us was ever a billion dollars in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> on the next Roseanne Show from New York. From the world-famous Tavern on the Green in New York City, it's The Roseanne Show. Today, billionaire Donald Trump shares his personal side. Also, filmmaker Michael Moore. And outspoken talk show diva Virginia Graham. And now, here's Roseanne. things that we absolutely had to do when we came to New York. One was to come to Tavern on the Green, and the other was to hang out with my next guest. She is outspoken, hilarious, and she's still alive! Please welcome the grand diva of talk show host, Miss Virginia Graham. Tell you this place. Let me tell you about this. This is where your whole this is my afterbirth. career started. This was is, Tavern on the Green? What, and you and were early. doing a fashion show here and for Mr. John. Who's that? Well, Mr. Honey, he cost thirty-five dollars. John Fred was <laughs> the. You couldn't spit on his things unless you had a birth certificate. Gorgeous, gorgeous hats. And hats? Early, yeah, beautiful hats. So you were doing this fashion show. I was show. then dark at the roots, but it didn't show. So, so you're I'm doing, doing a, a fashion, fashion show, show for a hat. Yes, and they decided this was a test. Right run. here yes. at they, Tavern was, on the Green. Remember, the Tavern on the Green yes. was, is the diamond of the park. Right, it the is jewel the most, in the park. It is the only Renaissance beautiful place that people who are depressed and drive by see the gorgeous lights. It is it's, a beautiful place. And it's place. romantic. It is romantic. I mean, and I'm with falling the, in love with you even oh, now. Yes, I mean. <laughs> Now, uh, wait a minute. I bet I haven't tried. But I <laughs> now, wait a minute. Yes. You're doing a fashion show at Tavern on the oh, Green. Oh, we've skipped the background. We're back. Okay, so this is, and, the, and, and the head, head of, of NBC, NBC. Who swallowed live salmon as an hors d'oeuvre. When I tell you mean, you can't believe. And he's sitting there like this. What the hell have we got on here? Look at women. They, every day was a different charity. Do yeah. you know how to get popular? Invite people from a charity. Because oh. then they'll come. So that's at the birth of daytime television. And I'm so doing the fashion show. So he sees you here, the fashion show. And I he am goes, this woman is so I'm hilarious. murdering the hats. John is in Spain, and they wipe, tell him he's been wiped okay, out. Okay, so you're, you're doing, the, like you're a, doing a hat show. I am murdering and hats. The, you know, the guy goes up, and he and goes, this is the funniest woman in the world. The I've got to give her a talk show. The secretaries came yes. in and were laughing. He said, why are you laughing? Which shows what a judge he was of humanity. And he said, they said, she is the funniest broad that ever lived. And yeah. I was broad. Yeah. I was a size 20. Honey, my bust was my breakfast tray. Now it's navel, <laughs> now it's navel length. Now it's the navel length, navel length and soon at the knee. Have you thought of getting a breast um, augmentation? For what? I have a trouble finding it to put in my brassiere now. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, dear, I mean, look. So anyhow, so he, they, they're all laughing. Yes. And I, and I, my name was Virginia Gutenberg. By the time they'd announced it in World War III, we'd be lost. <laughs> so I changed it to Gotham, Gotham. Because in our day, we monogrammed. Do you remember when right. we used to give a monogram? Now it's guess who, hope it lasts, best of luck, or, or honey, have a good marriage. But now you mean day, for a wedding gift? Yeah, but now you monogram. When I got married, you had everything with the monogram. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I took the name of Gotham. Now you a went to a show. fortune teller and she changed who said my you name. need to change your name to yes. Graham and then yes. you'll be very famous. Yes. So I, you did that, right? I did that. I got and a then chicken got sandwich and, and stale cheesecake for $1.75 at the Little Club. <laughs> and Edith Efren is yeah. the one that brought her back into my life. Oh, it's a, this is another book, you know. I haven't even mentioned my new book, which we won't do. What is it called? I love antiques, but I don't want to be one. But now that it is. <laughs> <laughs> You should see my arteries without Estee Lauder. You know why you are going to be the best talk show host? No, you ever. said in Liz Smith, it was so nice of you. You said that you thought I was the best of all uh, the are. new talk shows. Not new, all lived since me. Oh my God. And I'll tell you. you why. You have curiosity and you let your guests be important. You're not auditioning. I, I, there's a couple that are on the air 
that when I come in, he gets giant hives when he sees when me. When he sees you? Yeah, and I'm, and I'm only waiting for Forslund to call me. It's your turn. And I'm a threat. <laughs> You mean he's threatened? Yeah, yeah you're well, the only... Well, comics are threatened people. But you're not threatened by no, anybody. No, I'm not threatened because I like people. Let me thank you for saying such a nice thing no, about me. But, you know, then you had to get a little dig in there, and you go, but she's rough. No. She's a little rough no, around no, that. What's up you, with that? Now I'll tell you what that is. <laughs> it happens to be true, but I didn't say it. Where's See, the why? roughness? You must never, ever read a column. Right. They why? were interviewing me, how did I like the show? You know, she's rough. Was she rough with you? And I said, she was a little rough, but that's her style. You see, they don't give what the fact that someone asks you a question. Oh, no, they They uh, think yeah. that it's something you volunteered. Oh. And my granddaughter, who was my greatest critic, discovered it immediately and said... So, do you think I'm rough around the edges, or do you no, think that I I'm think pretty refined? No, I think, honest, oh, I, I think you haven't scratched the surface of what you are. Well, because nice I people. think that you don't know how beautiful you are inside. You have, you have the feeling that you're Very beginning sweet. a new phase of life. I'll and tell you, know. you about New York. Let me tell you how I felt coming to New York. Because you are the grand diva of New York. The ladies' rooms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I just love New York. And what a great energy there is here. And we just had the best time. You know, we went to the Apollo Theater. We left there with a great... Uh, that we had been given a great energy, a great positive well, they, energy, and we left positive energy people. behind. You know, darling, we are the world, and yeah. you are interested in the world. We'll be back in a minute with more with Virginia Graham. <laughs> well, here we are back at Tavern on the Green with Virginia Graham. Well, we're going to do a little fashion show. Oh, we yes. want a little I, bit of fashion advice. I understand advice. about we're having leopard. Well, oh, here we have stunning. a... Isn't that beautiful? Now, that's oh. the fake, isn't it? Is that real? <laughs> Honey, I'll tell you. Come here, darling. I'm a feeler. <laughs> Ache fake. But they're very pretty. <laughs> very pretty, darling. Now, I don't think we're allowed to kill leopards and oh, wear their fur in America. Them. No, no. No, but look at the bag. It matches. Oh, it's nice and thin. What yes. can you get in here? Anything? Nothing, darling. Or Just your hotel. <laughs> Thank you, you look beautiful. And now, the next one. Uh, I, I, oh my God, how skinny I, I, are you? Now, wait a minute. Oh my God, you this have got to eat, eat this donut. You've got to have this donut. Make her eat this donut. You're the first minus one. You're the first minus one I've ever seen. No, what is this? Yeah, let me ask you something. <laughs> not spits out mm. <laughs> let me see you i'll tell by the way I'm you like eat my mother would you no, like some mother? people are naturally thin and they not don't like this, really start. this is skeletal here hey, 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 take a bite let me she see did. how you she eat she took a bite oh yeah baby yeah, she's, she's an eater she's an eater yeah, she's salivating yeah all right are you gonna, you're, okay all you're right beautiful. You're, who made this dress you're here? beautiful yeah, do they beautiful get the young name? girl <laughs> Who's that? Oh. Dolce & Gabbana. Oh, that's it's nice. Very nice. It's American very nice. It's very nice. Yeah, very nice. I like the all shoes are to kill. No, I like this. It took about a half. Oh, my God. Check out half. the shoes. Go yes, ahead so and finish word. your rolls Goodbye, darling. Stuff. Thank you so much. Size very four. nice. <laughs> darling. Very cute, girl. Let me see. Well, any. that's oh, an see, interesting... she's got a chukas. Yeah, she now, has a... <laughs> Never had, did you know, big busted this is women never have a tuchus? Big busted women never no, have a bust. I have you're, no bust at all. I have none either. Did you never have a bust? I never had a tuchus. Oh. But I, it took us a long time to realize it. Now, let me see, dear. Oh, I love this bag. Oh, now bag. this bag I like. Very you, you look cute. stunning. Virginia, I will you? give you $100 to go in the bathroom and put this on. I might not. Do you think you could get it on a fit? Honey, my little titties are down now. <laughs> No more. Get this on. I've got this, my pants up here like I'm stocking. Honey, and what size are you? You're a four and the other You're one's a four? four? Two liars. <laughs> no, what, do, you, do you eat, darling? Yes. You're a beautiful young girl. Now, is this all from the same manufacturer? Yes. Who makes it? 
Dos and Gabbana. What, Very yeah, beautiful. You, any idea? We don't want to be mercenary, but around about to the penny. How much, how is, much is this outfit? <laughs> I don't know. No idea. They wouldn't dare tell you, right? You no look buying stunning, off the model. though. Yeah. I love. Let's see the shoes. Oh, the see, shoes, no, toe cleavage, the, the very Duchess nice. The of Windsor always wore a pump. The finest designers say a little, that your shoe a should be a continuation of your hem. Look what we're doing with the rolls. I came here for brunch. Um, weren't they beautiful? I tell you, they Do I think they're beautiful? $2,500. That little vest was $2,500, honey. Honda. <laughs> My what? A Honda. A car. $2,500. Oh, yes, I don't know who needs new. Well, you know, a lot of people have the money. $2,500 for a bra? <laughs> this, honey, dear, this is one yard of fabric, but it's worth it, darling. Oh, I, I think money. you are a stunningly beautiful woman. You do? I do, and you are a brilliant woman. Well, thank you. And you are an elegant woman. And well, I have to say thank you, and you're out of I here, have babe. I that's what you're <laughs> years ago, my first guest was a reverse billionaire. He was a billion dollars in the hole, which I don't even know how you would get there, but we'll ask him. Now, <laughs> but he's climbed all the way back, back to the top, and we're up here with him in this exclusive restaurant, Tavern on the Green. So please welcome Donald Trump. <laughs> you, are, you are like everybody's dream of America. You know, you, you live it like the rags, are, well, you didn't really have rags, but I mean, all the riches and everything that America can offer, you got it. Well, I've had a good time. I've enjoyed myself. I've enjoyed my life. Uh, I do things that I really, uh, you know, it's creative. I build these big, beautiful buildings or buy buildings that are already built and fix them. And like the General Motors building I bought last week. Oh, you and, did? Yeah. And it's, it's How much just, did that cost you? Can we ask? Can we be nosy? So, sick what I paid. I, Just I paid, say between, like... I paid $800 million. $800 million yeah. for one building? One building. Wow. I'll tell you if it works in about two years from now. What do you do with it after you buy it? Fix it, make it beautiful. It's the best location in the city, as you know. We're on 59th and 5th, and fronting also on Madison Avenue, and it's a very big building, obviously. Otherwise, I really paid too much. And it's going to be, you know, it's, it's the best. It's the best piece of real estate. So... I'll fix it, make it beautiful, and make it even more successful, and do nicely with it, uh, despite, obviously, a pretty good price. Well, it's all in the mind, isn't it? Because I, I read that you said that somebody was trying to be competitive with you about one of your other buildings, and they cut the price for rent right. to attract people. Right. So instead, you raised the rent, and you filled yours first. Well, I had a big success recently, 40 Wall Street, which I bought three years ago for just the opposite of General Motors. I bought it for very little money, and it's a very big building. It was actually the tallest building in the world for a period of time. It's 72 stories, and it's now the tallest building in downtown Manhattan outside of the World Trade Center. And it was virtually completely empty, and now it's completely full. CNA Insurance, American Express, Bear Stearns, a lot of great tenants, Compact Computer, all lease space there. And it's turned out to be terrific. But is that true that you raised the price? I did. I, I sometimes raise the price because people say, what's going on? They don't understand what's going on, and sometimes they pay it, and sometimes they don't. When they don't... You have trouble. When they but, do, it's good. But, Donald, what is going on with the money thing? Well, I think that... What's the, the energy behind money? Because money is really just energy, right? I think money is energy. I think life is energy. I mean, without energy, you're, you're nothing. Um, and one of the reasons that New York is so great is that in New York, we have the greatest energy. And sort of everybody knows it. No matter where they live, and they may like their own place better, but when they come to New York, they always admit that they have more energy. Something happens. They're rejuvenated. And it's an amazing place, an amazing city. Rudy Giuliani has been a great mayor. He's done a terrific job. But what about the money deal? Uh, You're not answering my question. Well, well, what is money to you? To me... What does it represent? What's it a metaphor me, for? money is a scorecard. Yeah. It's how well have you done. It's like when you play golf, you have a scorecard. I think money is a scorecard. I don't do things for the money. I do them for the pleasure, for the art. Uh, building a Trump Tower, or now I'm building a building that's 90 stories tall, opposite, directly opposite the United Nations in New York, 
or doing Trump International Hotel and Tower in Central Park West, where it's, you know, it's become a very hot hotel and condo, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do it for the aesthetic. I do it as my canvas. And then I, I generally make a lot of money on it. And so you're saying that you, the buildings are, that's your art form, that's it's your my form of form, expression. And, and, and I love it. And you don't do anything for the money. I don't really do it for the money, and I make money. Okay, because this is my, this is what I happen to know, too, and we, we'd like to say that to people out there. When you do stuff for money, you never get any money, do you? A lot of times when you do it for the money, you don't make money. Right. I do it because I enjoy doing it. I love the artistic sense of it. I have a friend, he's a very wealthy guy. He puts cable in the ground, and when he comes up to Trump Tower, he looks and he says, you know, I make a lot of money, Donald, but there's something so artistic. Nobody sees what I do. I put cable in the ground. And I get a penny a foot, but that's a lot of money over a course of a year and a lifetime. He said, but what you do is so artistic. Everybody sees it. Nobody sees what I do. And I sort of thought to myself, it's interesting. But I, I love what I do. And now I do other deals other than buildings. But the thing I like best is building or creating something that is really monumental in the form of a building. But we all like, just know you as the money guy. Well, people think because we want to know how are you getting all this money? How are you attracting this money to you? Well, I, I mean, want more money. Money. <laughs> how am I gonna get more money? Money Tell just me. seems to come. I mean, money yeah. uh, comes. Money does come. Money, money seems to come to me because I do a good job. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing, and I have a sense of what to build. I know when to build, what to build, what it should look like, what levels of quality, and people buy and rent my product more so than they buy and rent other people's products. So you're really saying that you don't do anything for the money, you do it for the aesthetic and the art. I do it for the enjoyment, I enjoyment. do it for the art, I do it for the aesthetic, and, and, you know, a lot of good things come out of that. It's sort of, if you enjoy something, you'll be successful. I enjoy what I do. I think that's true. I really do. That's I enjoy what key, I do. That's the key, isn't it? To I enjoy think so. It. I think to a large extent that's the key. Yeah, because when you enjoy something, you're putting a lot of energy to it, and a lot right. of energy comes that's back. That's right. And, and you feel it. And Vince Lombardi, the great football coach, said you have to love it. You know, he had this expression, you have, now in that case, you had to love hitting, you had to love going right. whacking each other. Um, and it's true. If you don't love it, you're not going to be successful at it. Well, now, how did you get a billion dollars in the hole? Who, who's ever done that before? Well, the market collapsed in, the, uh, in 1990, and I went from uh, a couple of billion up to, I mean, I had borrowed many billions of dollars. People God. said nine, and, 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 you know, that was fine. How do fine. you borrow a billion dollars? It's not easy. You have to be a professional. <laughs> your PhD. <laughs> But, but my assets were much more valuable than that. And then all of a sudden, the asset value went down because we had a depression, literally, in 1990 to 93 or so. Right. It was certainly a real estate depression. And I had the same debt. All of a sudden, the asset values went down. And I went back to work, and I really worked well, and I worked hard, and I focused. I mean, you know, I, I did take a When you talk about energy, mm -hmm. I was so successful for so long, for 15 and 18 years, that I thought it was almost natural. And I took a little bit of a time off. I didn't focus the way I did at one point. And all of a sudden, I said, hey, I'd better get back to work very quickly, or I'm not going to have all of this stuff, and I'm not going to be in your program, and lots of other things, lots of other good things. You so, had a huge wake-up call in those I had years, a wake-up call. You? It's a great, I never heard the expression, I had a wake-up call. And um, I had to either get back to work, or I wasn't going to be living at the top of Trump Tower very long. And uh, I did get back to work, and now my company is much bigger and much stronger than it was in the 1980s. I mean, it's not even close. And How do they know, assign worth? I mean, who's the one that's in charge of so assigning worth to stuff? Because I know you bought a yacht for $29 million. Right. You did a little bit of work on it, and now it's worth $100 million, which is inconceivable. But uh, who's, well, who's just, assigning that? Uh, net worth? Who's assigning worth? No, just on the boat. I know, oh. I know you say, they say you're worth $1 billion, but you say you're worth $5 billion. But who's ever seen one billion to begin with, and yeah. how are they going to tell what the hell it I don't looks know what like? The, and yeah, people say I'm worth different amounts of money, but you know you can't really. It's very hard to figure what I'm worth because I have buildings, and what's a building worth? What's Trump right. Tower worth? What's General Motors building worth? What are all these buildings worth? Sometimes they're worth right. more than other times. Um, but again, you have to like it. If you don't like it. They're worth nothing. Nothing's worth anything because you have to enjoy your life. First and foremost, you have to enjoy it. I often tell people and friends of mine, like I have one guy who is not a successful guy, and he did something with golf courses, and he loved it so much, but he couldn't make any real money. I said, you'll make more money if you do that with golf courses, which is what you love, than if you go in what in theory is a better business and right. a bigger business. He's doing much better now and loves his life building golf courses than he was doing before in really a much bigger business 
but he's making more money and he's having a lot more so fun. So you're telling us that we will get money coming to us when we do what we love and do it well. Well, you have to do what you, you love. And regardless, you have to do that, even beyond the money. I mean, you have to do. Otherwise, there's no reason to wake up in the morning. Okay, we're going to commercial, and then we're going to come back and get off the money thing and go to you and women. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> The Roseanne Show is coming from the Apollo Theater in New York this week. Joining Roseanne are Bill Cosby, John Goodman, Julio Iglesias, Gladys Knight, Martin Short, and Donald Trump. So start spreading the news, baby. Roseanne's hitting New York this week, and she has all your favorite stars with her. The Apollo will never be the same. Don't miss it. on the green with Donald Trump, our guest. Now, Donald, before I ask you about women and, you know, your mother, of course, that's where I think everyone gets their ideas of mother, or of women. Right, to a certain extent. Yeah, do you, do you have any fun? I love life. I mean, I love it because I like what I do, and I love it I, both, I like doing the day and during the evening. Work hard and play hard, and I think that's probably So important. you have fun that doesn't have to do with work? Because I, I find that hard. No, I, I have fun that really doesn't have to do with work, but I think everything is basically work-oriented, but I do have fun that doesn't necessarily have to do with work. But, but you don't travel a lot, or do you? You just... I, tr I just got back from Hong Kong, which was a 20-hour trip, which Man. is murder. Um, yeah. And that was business. I travel, but I really, I really like my, my life... Uh, after my office hours also. I mean, I'm sort of around New York, and I, I like it. Well, you, are, are you seeing place. anyone? Can I be nosy? Uh, not particularly. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of people. <laughs> Women-wise? Women-wise, yeah. I'm yeah. into women more than men. I mean, you know, I'm all for guys that like men, but I'm, it's just not my thing. Right. Um, you really like women. I never like really women. understood that. What? Guys that like guys. Well, I, I think well, it's terrific if they're really into it. But, you know, and if I were into it, I'd be into it. But I like women. That's my definite preference. Yeah. I like women. Now, how, which one do you like most, women or money? <laughs> um, Honestly. Now, that could be a tough question. Is that tough? That's a tough question. I, I really like, uh, I, I really admire and respect women. I have to tell right. you. You know, I joke and we're cavalier. But I think women are incredible. They're smarter than men. Thank you. They're tougher than men. Thank you. And certain women can lead certain men right down anything they want. It's the power of a certain thing that's just unbelievable. <laughs> and and does, that, does that go for you? Can you oh, be can led be anywhere? Led. Oh, yes, I can be led. And, Would you ever um, go for a fat, middle-aged woman that's a Jew? It's always possible. No, you're, you're no. more into the young, blonde, thin I, I, model I thing, aren't you? I tend to be, but, you know, you never know what happens. I mean, life changes. Yeah. Life can change. And Have you ever been with a fat woman? No. <laughs> but, but it could happen. It could happen. You should try Just it. I know. I, I, it's good. <laughs> I can imagine this very good. No, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. I think I'd be very pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I have a feeling. So you're not seeing anyone. You're seeing a lot of people. Uh, really a lot of people at this point. Now, why is it? You're not getting married again, I hope. Did you learn your lesson, or are oh, you going to do you it again? You tell me, should I? <laughs> no, don't get married again. Mm. Except for you always had prenuptial agreements. I Excellent. did. I learned from you. I yeah. did. You need a prenup. <laughs> well, you did. I mean, you had yeah. to learn something from me, because you've gone through the ringer. There's no yeah. question about it. This is my third and final marriage. Well, that's good. And I think yeah. that's terrific. And it sounds like you're getting along very well. We're getting along, yeah. yeah fight God. every once in a while. Yeah, well, I go crazy. Oh, my God. No, we have to talk about this. The can't shake hand thing. Ah, good. Because, okay, you know, I have this thing just started a week ago, the hands and the germs, and I know you have it too, right? I think it's a terrible, terrible custom in this country. <laughs> and oftentimes I'll be sitting at a table having a roll and some guy comes up and he's a nice guy. He says, oh, Mr. Trump, I really like you. I really respect you. Could I just shake your hand? And you know, you're eating a roll and he just came out of the men's room and you're saying, why do I have to be doing this? <laughs> the only good thing is you tend to lose weight. You don't need as much because you put the roll down and that's the end of the roll for the night. And it, frankly, it's the end of the whole evening as far as I'm concerned. Really? I, do you have to run in and wash your hands well, in the Well, I prefer to. Is it like the, a germ thing? It's that, a germ. I'm a germ freak. There's no question. Are, in your house, are I you wash, like... I am even in my... I wash my hands as many times as possible. I'm very clean. I like to take showers. You know, I like 
I just I'm into I'm into staying nice and clean. Does now I think that I think that the, like being creative and being successful, it seems to like go hand in hand with the like obsessive compulsive disorder somewhere. Well, that's right, and, and probably you and I have that, and along with a few other people. Oh my Not God! That since many I said, that. since I came out of the closet, so to speak, right. what with the hand thing and right. all. You would not believe everyone I'm meeting, every famous person has that or some other thing. You said that you like the Japanese culture because they bow. Well, the one thing I really like about the Japanese culture, because I don't like a lot of things about it, but the one thing I do like is this. I would do that all day long yeah. to anybody that they want <laughs> yes. if they just left me alone. If they stopped I think trying this to shake be, your hand. Yeah, it'd be right. great. I mean, it would be terrific. And, I tell people I'll hug you or even kiss you, but I'll kiss them on the cheek or something, uh, other than have to avoid touching them. I actually hand. prefer that to the other. And, you know, and also studies have come out saying that, you know, you, you catch colds, you catch everything yeah. with the hands. And I just don't understand it. So the Japanese culture has a very, very proper way, and that's a slight bow. And I'd get, I don't care, I'd get on my knees, I'd do a slight bow, a major bow, it wouldn't matter. But right. shaking hands is a disaster, but I think we probably have to do it. Do you just not shake hands with people? Well, I just started, it started like a week ago, I was in my car, and right. it's like I had about four really sweaty hands in a row. Oh, it's terrible. Shaking hands with people with sweaty hands, and it oh, just you go, oh, because you don't know what it is. Oh, and then you have the people that shake your hand, and they're nice, and they think they're doing a favor, so they shake your hand, and they go like this, and they start wiping their hand <laughs> off, because they think, they do and it's still sweaty. And those are usually the really sweaty ones because that's why they're doing it. They have a problem. And they sweat, and then you, and it's just a disaster. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes. I do know what you mean. And I appreciate you talking about it. And I want to talk about your mom, too, because okay. I thought that was so sweet that you said your mother was a housewife, but she was like, she had the best advice and she was a brilliant woman. Well, she's a brilliant woman. She's a really good woman. And uh, she is a woman who. I say she's a working woman, but she was always a housewife. She was a great mother right, and we still are work is. They are workers. There's we a are. real worker, and right. she worked just as hard as my father. My father was a builder in Brooklyn and Queens and terrific. But my mother was a really hard worker, and every bit of, uh, you know, they married 57 years, 58 wow. years. And wow. so they don't understand the word divorce. You know, divorce, right. it's like, what Was your divorce? mother shocked when you got divorced? Uh, it just wasn't a word that ever entered the vocabulary. You know, divorce isn't like an acceptable thing, but it's not even acceptable. It just doesn't happen. But right. it's a little bit of a different generation, I suspect. Yeah, totally. But she's different. a terrific woman and really a great example and role model, as was my father. Now, do you think that you're um, like, you know, seeing a lot of women and having, you know, divorces and stuff like that? Is that because you're, are you ever going to find any woman that measures up to mom? No, I doubt it. I think, you know, my mother's very special. Uh, and I don't like to think of women in terms of my mother because I'd never touch them. <laughs> that, that's another thing that I'm not into, but, you know, it's like... Well, is that, oh, is never, that why they... Well, let's I would go never, there. No, my mother's like a person... She's uh, just a, just a great woman and a really wonderful woman. So I don't like to equate the women I go out with. You mean you don't want to think I'd your never mother's kiss a woman? Good night or beyond that. You don't want to think your mother's a woman. No, she's a great woman. I just don't want to equate other women because I literally. Because there's like this one woman that's yeah. like yeah, the she's queen special, of all women. She's a special woman and she never kissed anybody. She never did. Anything. She never had sex. Or, <laughs> she never had yeah. sex. My mother never had sex. <laughs> she never even thought about sex. Do you think she shook hands with she's anyone? Perfect. I mean, you know. <laughs> So how could I go out with anybody like that? That right. would be terrible. So, uh, but she is very special. I bet she feels that way about you, too. Well, I bet should. you're her I mean, special little baby. She better feel that way about you. So, um, thank you for being here. Well, I'm fascinated by you. You will always remain fascinating to all of us. Thank and you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. next guest is kind of the polar, philosophical polar opposite of Donald Trump, I think, but maybe not. We'll find out. He is a visible crusader for working class people, working class rights. His first film was the classic documentary Roger and Me, which was so great. And ever since, he has fought a never-ending battle, as has Donald Trump, for truth, justice, and the American way. Please welcome my blue-collar panelist, Michael Moore. <laughs> So 
we want to have like a little bit of a panel because look, how, how could I avoid this? He's terrific, I tell you. I, loved, I loved what he did. Oh. If I was Roger, I wouldn't have liked it, but I, I enjoyed it. I well, hope he never does one on me, though, I will tell you. Well, well you, you he's have, met you. You're a little, you're a little more um, accessible than the Roger guy. Perhaps. Yeah, you're you're not you hiding to, you in destroy, an ivory tower. You have to destroy, like, a town, you know, throw yeah. 30... You have, to, you have to, like, throw 30,000 people out of work and, yeah, you know... Yeah, it's uh, a pretty rough time. Yeah. So. Um, do you th here's the question. It will be like a debate thing. Do some people have too much stuff? Go ahead, Michael. Well... You know, we live, we live in a country now where the richest 1% own over 50% of all the wealth in this country. We talk a lot about, you know, how, you know, wealthy people have become even more wealthy and things are great and the stock market's setting a new record every week and profits are up like 250% this decade, but wages are only up 3%. Now, how can the profits be up 250% if the buying power is only up 3%? How did that happen? You know, it, it happened because the average American out here is, has been forced into debt. And it's being built on, you know, people living on three credit cards, paying the minimum balance each month to get by, second mortgages on their houses. We have the highest personal debt in the history of this country right now. And more personal bankruptcies last year than at any time since the Great Depression. We don't talk about that. What's happened to the concept of making sure that we take care of the least among us? That, that you know, that, that how we'll be judged is how we treat those who are, you know, people who are having a, a tougher go of it. And, I mean, I know I've, you know, read your books. You've, you've been on welfare at times in mm -hmm. your life. I've been on unemployment three different times in my life. And but you know what? Neither one of us was ever a billion dollars in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what like it means to be very poor. That's, <laughs> that'd be like the poorest guy on earth. I was, down, I was down, you know, almost about 900 million in a negative sense. Oh you know, my you go God. up four or five, you go down 900 million. Uh, so I've been all over, so I was much poorer than you. So I can honestly say, thank you very much. I never thought of that. But I can honestly say I was much poorer than both of them. And, and, and what unemployment line were you standing in? Uh, <laughs> I, was doing, I was doing okay. Was, and my what, lifestyle didn't suffer that much, I will say that. Yeah. I'm, I'm very embarrassed. Well, well how are we going to fix things? Let me ask you that. How are we going to fix, like, address a little bit about what he talked about, the least among us. I think it all starts with education. You have to do the best to get everybody educated so they can sort of fend for themselves a little bit better. Uh, I think education is maybe a key word and a very important word. It sounds, it sounds simple uh, and it's not. It's a much more complex problem than that, as we know. Yeah. But, but why, education is a very big step in the right direction. Donald, why is it then that, that Republicans and conservatives then keep wanting to cut education? They keep cutting the education budgets. Yeah. And you talk to the average, I mean, anybody who's sending their kids to public schools, I mean, the, the classrooms are bigger, the, 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 the roofs are leaking. I mean, the, the place, the, the schools are really falling apart. And why, at a time of incredible wealth, you know, when we have so much right now, why wouldn't we put this money into that? We have the first budget surplus in, what, three decades. I mean, why aren't we putting the money into that sort of well, thing? Well, I have maybe to it's because Maybe it's because it is a house of cards. Maybe it really no. isn't a surplus. Well, what do you think? I don't think, think it's you know? a house of cards. I no? think we have a very solid country. I think we have a great country in a lot of ways. And, uh, but there are weaknesses to everything else. And I happen to agree. I mean, I, I think that more money, a lot more money should be put into education and other things, but a lot more money should be put into education. I think a lot more money should be put into seniors because, you know, some seniors, they work their lives and they live right. like dogs for the last 10 or 15 years of their life. And, you know, I could see that happening also. So Well, maybe you need to run for president or something because you know how to make money and balance things. Because check this out. Today. Check this out. No, I, I mean it because check this out. Like... All these billions that they're spending on prisons, well, if you put it in the beginning of people's lives and it went to education, wouldn't that save us something on the back end? Well, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, think, I think money should be spent on prisons. I'm a big law and order guy. Oh, I mean, yeah, well, I, I, I think, think murders and think, stuff, they should be locked I up. I think, right. But think, education, doesn't it deter crime? Doesn't no, I think it, it would. I think it would have an effect. But... Uh, I think education is, is terrific. You got to put a lot of money, but you also have to put a lot of money into the law enforcement and prisons. Right. Yeah, but what Definitely. they're doing now is they're building these private prisons, and, and these private companies are having prisoners do work for these companies. <laughs> uh, in, in my film uh, this year that I had out, I showed how TWA, if you call at certain times of the day, their 800 number, you get a prisoner in the uh, California Youth Authority prison in Ventura County, California, answering the 800 number. You're now, kidding me. No, and why is it that, that TWA and other companies have used prisoners, Eddie Bauer and uh, uh, Microsoft, they, doing prison labor? I thought this only happened in China, where they use prisoners to do actual work 
for not for the state, like making license plates or cleaning the roads or something that benefits society the way they're repaying their debt. They're, what's their debt to TWA? <laughs> well, you know, I don't understand Well, maybe that. they're learning a trade, though. Maybe they're learning a job. Right, and, and so that's, that's a good reason. But what, the, what TWA and what these other companies are doing, they're laying people off out here, people who didn't commit crimes, and giving the and giving the jobs that people are making fifty cents or a dollar fifty an hour. What what is the morality of that? You know, I just I, I think that what they're they're not trying to do it for any high end reason or high minded reason. They're doing it because they want to save a buck, make a bigger profit, and uh, and uh, you know I just suggest well why don't we just get rid of you know why don't we just lay more people off? They'll, some of them will turn to crime, you know, <laughs> and then, we can and then they can get their old their job wages. back. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so it's like, That, that whole that whole way of thinking gets all bogged down too and it doesn't go anywhere either yeah, yeah. you know I mean witness the whole Soviet Union sure well, it doesn't go anywhere I'm not calling you a communist no but that socialist <laughs> stuff it doesn't go anywhere that, it's just it's just a huge mess like but, everything else and here's, the, here's the funny here's the ironic thing is that the the socialist Soviet thing is what now conservatives in this country like they want to eliminate the competition they want to merge and buy out the competition so that they're the only company, right? So we have only like five media. I was thinking you know, that. Is that true, they, Donald? I was thinking the, that the rich people are trying to make us communists. Like, they're trying to be like the old Soviet Union. How about this? When the Republicans voted for impeachment, they voted 227 to zero. Not one dissent, like the old Politburo in the Soviet Union, where, where, where everyone agrees, right? You know, it's like that's how the Republicans are in Congress. There's like, they're, they're like the old commies. It's, Donald, it's really you cannot weird. let... Other rich people turn this into a communist country. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't think we have too much of a problem, but it certainly is an interesting viewpoint. Well, this, is, this is one I have not heard before. I hadn't heard and it either, the but Democrats I like it. Democrats and the Republicans are like the same party now. We have a one-party system. There's well, no difference Well, me and you are going to talk about that dumb. because we have to let Donald go because he flew in from Hong Kong and he's tired. Oh, wow. And I just want to say how um, happy I was to see you and how nice it well, was to have you to on my show. With both of you. Thank yes, you very thank much. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, I don't mind. Shake his hand. Yeah, I'm going to give you a hug, though. Have a good time. I'm hugging you. Can you hug? I can. I can hug. I can hug. Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, she's so beautiful. It's a Roseanne sitcom reunion with John Goodman, Laurie Metcalf, and the rest of the family on the next Roseanne Show. Well, now it's just me and Michael Moore alone. We were talking about our parents and their generation and how different the world is now. And also talking about how people in the real world actually talk this way. Right. Right. Even though, like, it, you, you've done TV, so you know. Like, people on TV, they're so horrified of, like, real people and what real people really talk about, aren't they? Right. Yeah, completely. Completely. Why? Actually, I don't know. And I, I just had this experience last year because I, I actually wrote and, and produced a pilot, a sitcom, uh, that was very much inspired by what you did. Uh, and, and when I when you announced that you were going to, uh, you know, Roseanne was going to leave the air last year, I thought, well, just, there's not going to be any working class voice in, in this form of a sitcom so I wrote this thing and, and actually uh, uh, they produced it at CBS uh, oh, produced the pilot and, uh, and I think you know when they saw it they were it was kind of like they could tell right away that there was a language there was a communication right. problem with but yeah. I said this is really how it is this is how people are this is how they talk this is what they care about and 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 working people are not buffoons and right. they're not dumb and you know they, right. they they're, and they're pretty, not racist and they're not racist and and they they are not any of the things that television has made us out uh, to be right and uh, and you never see an image of us on the screen I mean it's, it's, it's just so it's odd isn't it we yeah. make up the majority of the country and yet we don't see ourselves on TV and it's rare it's a rare day when somebody like you or in my small way where we are able to sort of slip in under the radar yeah. and suddenly get on TV because who would have thought yeah. you know 20 years ago or 10 years ago with me it would, we would even be we'd be sitting here doing this because when we were being raised this way we weren't we, this wasn't even our in our frame of any kind of consciousness right I mean, no. can you, I mean well it, it was a little bit in mind because I I was like a TV addict and I still am kind of a TV right. addict. No, and I, and was I never was too. seeing anybody like me on there that said anything like that I knew everybody around me talked about every single day 
Right. So you were determined that. that well, I wanted to see it on TV. You wanted and, to see it. And, you know, and now, so I had to do it myself. Right. You know? Right. Well, I, I guess I kind of feel the same way. Yeah. You know? I, because, because I think that. I can see that in your work that you feel the same way. We were talking in the break. You were asking me about, you know, political activism or, you know, crusader. And I said, you know, I really don't see myself that way. I'm, I'm really just a guy who grew up in Flint, Michigan. I have a high school education. And, and I, I just really want to just be a citizen, which. To me, means if you're a citizen in a democracy that you're a participant. Right. And if we all just participated a little bit, it'd be a better country. You can't be a spectator if it's a democracy. It's that's something else. And, and, and that's all I want to do. And, and something is real scary, like that uh, the country is getting sold away or something from like the working people who make it up. Yeah. Well, that's the part I don't get. I mean, it's, it's it just seems so. Is it going like I'm just? Is it is it going right wing or left wing? I can't even tell which. It's going to the money. You see, the, the, the people, the, the, the corporate chairman, the boards of directors, they're not liberal or conservative or right or left. They, they only care about the bottom line. So it's like that movie Network. Remember, that's my favorite movie. Right, right. When Ned Beatty said, in, in the future, there will only be multinational corporations. There won't be any more countries. There won't be, it'll just be the corporation. That's right. That's it right. is kind of what's going on, huh? Yeah, it is. I, I think mean, we're at a scary time. What can people do about it? Well, I think, um, I think, first of all, don't sink into any kind of despair or cynicism. Don't just sit back and say, oh, the politicians are all alike. Or, it's well, all everybody's outside. thinking that, though, after I know, this whole I know. Monica Gates well, thing. Yeah, thanks to, you know, Clinton and, and Cl the Republicans and everybody else, everybody's just like, I, I, I'm fed up. I don't want to deal with it anymore. And let me tell you something. The, the, the people who are running the show, the people who got all the money, that's exactly what they want you to do. They want you to say, I don't want to get involved anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore. You know, they want you just to stay away because they would rather run it. So I, I, I just encourage people, don't stay away from, the, from this. This is our country still. It's of, by, and for the people. But it only happens when you act locally and you act politically. And, uh, and that means go to your school board meeting. It means some of you should think about running for city council or village council or wherever you live. Don't just sit back and let the other people do it because usually they're the bad people. You know, it's like, you know, yeah, we're the ones true. that should be, should be running things. And, yeah. and uh, the people actually finally stood up and said, enough with this, get on with the business, do real stuff here. Why is it that 40 million people in this country have absolutely no health insurance? That's a real issue. Why don't they deal with yeah, that instead of cigars and People talk about that every day. People talk about it in the real world every day. In the real world, that's what it is. And in the real world, we have to take a break and say goodbye to you and thank you for oh, being here. Well, thanks for having me. It's sort of the oh, real such world. an honor to be here. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you.